All right, I don't have a chart on this, but I want to talk about cellular. So cellular is becoming a bigger deal. So there are actually companies now that, uh, like infrastructure networks and uh, Texas Energy Networks, that are building out cellular systems specifically for data collection. So the beauty of that is one of the big overheads in a typical cellular network is all of the switching. So that, you know, when I'm driving, my phone gets switched from one tower to another. When I'm doing a data network and it's a fixed point I'm talking to, I don't need that switching overhead. So they can actually deploy those kind of networks at lower price points. They're pretty prolific in areas like South Texas where it's flat and the trees are all this tall. They're less prolific in the Utica and Marcellus where it's hilly and the trees are all 50 foot tall just because it's hard to get co enough coverage to make it make sense, right? But cellular is another option. Um, I'm actually doing a project with a customer right now and we're doing a, a device that supports both cellular and satellite in the same device. And these are becoming quite popular. So what they will do is you can actually put two cellular NIC cards and a satellite card in the same device. And what it'll do is if the cellular signal drops out, it'll pick up the next cellular signal. If it drops out, it'll pick up the satellite signal. So they're, they can be quite reliable and they're, the price points for this, such, this stuff is, it, it, in terms of installation, it's quite competitive with re regular radio infrastructure. But here's the problem, when I buy microwave infrastructure or I buy radio infrastructure, I pay for the infrastructure and then I maintain it and I'm done. When I go cellular or satellite, I have to put in infrastructure, I have to put in towers, but I gotta put in field devices, and then I pay for all the data I move. So less cost of entry, higher cost of operation. All right, so that, that can matter depending on what kind of operator you are. If you're a mainline pipeline operator and you expect to be operating this pipeline for the next 25 years, you're probably in your financial modeling taking that into consideration. If you're a midstream operator and you're building out new infrastructure and you expect to, you expect to sell it in five years, your analysis is going to be completely different. Make sense? Okay. The beauty of it, again, as I said, is that the satellite is inexpensive, but a couple other problems with satellite. You also have this with the cellular guys. If you've ever negotiated with AT&T to figure out what you're going to pay before you pay it, you understand what the people that do this, do. and the satellite guys are just as bad, if not worse. So you get into these complex licensing and usage contracts, and there's a level of sophistication necessary to make sure you don't get gouged. Uh, the other thing is with satellites, they, when they go offline, they go completely offline. And they're typically offline at least once a year. Some systems are offline twice a year because they've got to go offline to perform maintenance, do software patches, et cetera. So, you know, you, it's, you're, you have to be careful about relying solely on satellite. All right, so here's, a, again, just another example of a simple telemetry using satellite. And then the last is lease line. Well, you know, we can still do telephone lines. Not very many people are doing dial-up modems anymore. There are still some out there. You know, the, the, the challenge with this is if I have the infrastructure in place and it's working, it's hard to get money to upgrade the infrastructure. You guys probably have deep pockets in all the companies you work for, but, you know, we don't in my company. So... The, the beauty of this is, particularly in the U.S., if I, you know, I can get drops anywhere. I can get DSL, I can get T1s. You know, I, I can get communication drops pretty much anywhere. The challenge becomes when I start getting out into these remote operating areas versus working out of a center like Houston, right? So why would I put my control center in Houston versus putting it in... Um, Oh, I'm trying to think of a name of a small town in South Texas. China Grove. Yeah, so probably in that small location, there's one small mom and pop communication provider. So they're basically one building with the gear in it. 
And it doesn't matter if I'm doing AT&T, Verizon, or whom, it's all going through that same building. So one of the big challenges for that kind of communication is if I, if I lock my control center down and tie it to that one provider, my reliability, sustainability, business continuity issue is problematic. If I'm in downtown Houston, I can get right on the backbone of multiple providers. And I can get, you know, I can get, not only can I get on the backbone of multiple providers, I can actually get power from more than one provider coming off of different power plants going through different switches. So that's why you tend to see the control centers in the larger metropolitan areas, because they're hardened. They have a lot more flexibility. It gets more tough when you get out in the, you know, in the woods, if you will. All right, I get asked all the time, why don't we do fiber? So I'm gonna ask you guys, why don't we do fiber? Why don't we just run fiber in the right of way with the pipeline? Because it's freaking expensive. Like, really expensive. Like, five bucks a foot expensive. The other thing about fiber is if it breaks, it's not like copper. You don't just splice it, right? So, somebody, you know, if Jim Bob gets out there with the backhoe and pulls up the fiber and breaks it, you don't just splice it back together. You got to go out there with equipment and fuse it. And if you don't do it right, it can become a problem, particularly when you start. It does not. If you ever put fiber in your house or in your office because you want fiber, whenever you get to the termination, make sure you roll it around your hand about five times and shove that in the wall before you terminate it. I'm just saying. I might have had some experience about that that I don't want to share. <laughs> so, <clears throat> okay. Now, the cool thing about fiber is it carries a lot of data. The other cool thing about fiber, and if you go into process plants, almost all the communications in a process plant in this day and age is fiber. And the reason, so copper is a conductor, right? If it gets an electrical strike or an electrical surge, it conducts it. What is glass? It's an insulator, right? So if I'm running a petrochemical plant and I get a lightning strike, if I'm an old plant and I got a bunch of cop copper, that lightning strike can go all over the plant. If I'm running fiber, I'm gonna isolate that strike. I'm gonna isolate that damage better. So that's another benefit. The other thing about fiber is there's some cool things you can do with it. You can, using fiber, drop it in a trench with a pipeline and listen to the pipeline. You can hear the vibration. You can run it down a well bore and you can pick up temperature change. Pick up, pick up about a one degree temperature change every one foot up and down a strand of fiber by putting electronics on it, which will allow you to know where your well is flowing. So on these long lateral, you know, 30, 40 completion horizontal wells, I can know which of my completions are flowing and which ones are not. Problem is, again, it's horribly expensive. Uh, there are people that use it for, um, that are advocating using it for leak detection because you can pick up and locate a very small leak. People use it for security. You can run it around a fence and you can, you know, you can tune it up and actually hear, a, you know, and, and detect a rabbit running around. I mean, so it's, there's a lot you can do with it, but all these technologies are expensive and they're in general immature, but they're coming, right? So we're probably going to be seeing a lot more fiber, but I don't know if we're going to be using it for communications as if we're going to be using it for other things, for what we do in remote telemetry, at least not for a while because just the cost. The other thing about fiber, and thank goodness this is changing, is there didn't used to be any termination standards. So, you know, there's lots of different ways to terminate and connect fiber. They're actually starting to get standards out there, and that's that level of difficulty is simplifying, but um, just another one of the challenges. All right, so what would you say is adequate communications in a SCADA system? It's a trick question. Yeah, so adequate communications in SCADA is more than I have now. That would be my definition of adequate communications, right? What, who, who here has conversations going on about, can I put video on my remote facilities? 
Can I put access control on my remote facilities? Can I take the video through the SCADA network? Can I put access control through the SCADA network? And you know, that's, it's a reasonable question, it's a non-trivial answer, right? So video works real well in a business IP network running 10, mega, 10 megabits or more. It works pretty good. You start trying to do it over 9600 baud, you're gonna have some difficulty, right? So, but communications like everything else is getting cheaper and we're getting new technologies for working with it all the time. So this is kind of a matrix, Ken, it's high level and what I'm trying to communicate to you guys, because you're gonna get into these conversations. Somebody's gonna ask you, why don't we just run fiber? Why don't, we, why, don't we put, you know, why don't we put a microwave backbone out there, right? You're gonna get asked this question. So radio and microwave, they have upfront capital costs, but no transmission cost. Satellite lease line fiber, or satellite lease line, you know, cellular, not a lot of capital costs, but you have transmission costs. You pay for every bite, you move down the pipe, right? So there is no, there is no golden, you know, golden answer to all this. One of the big challenges with SCADA is figuring out your telemetry. Now, the beauty of SCADA, and we're going to transition here to talk about the software, but the beauty of SCADA is once I have the infrastructure and I have the data, now I can start doing some cool stuff. But the infrastructure, getting it there is expensive, you know, out of the gate. 